We have looked at the unity of thought that flows through our world concerning the idea of meditation. And we have begun to learn to relax the body and still our thoughts. These are the initial steps of our journey inward. And we may be wondering at this point what we hope to achieve by involving ourselves in the meditative process. Is it only to achieve oneness with God? Going back to our initial thoughts about meditation, we spoke of the idea of healing and meditation being related. And perhaps this is the first and most tangible reward to be experienced. In unity, we look at healing as more than bodily healing, although that is a major aspect. We see it as healing of the whole man, healing of his mind, healing of his body, and healing of all aspects of his affairs. Whether you choose a spiritual path in meditation or the more clinical approach of biofeedback techniques does not alter the results. One may be more expedient in bringing us to the ultimate goal, but all are beneficial. As James Dillard Freeman, director of Silent Unity, says in his book, Prayer, the Master Key, it makes no difference to the power what you call it. Reality is no respecter of names. It answers the name you name. And man has named the reality many things, but it does not alter our ability to become attuned to it in meditation. Bodily healing interests most of us because when we hurt, we hurt, and we desire that the hurt cease. Unity came into being almost 90 years ago through the healing of Myrtle Fillmore. Through affirmative prayer and meditation, she was healed of disease. Since that time, Unity students have been meditating in the silence, as they call it, changing their lives and helping others to do so. Modern medicine is now moving into the realm of meditation. The work of Carl Symington, using meditation as an integral part of cancer therapy, is bringing great results in remissions and healings. Recently, in the New York Times, there appeared an article entitled, Prayer Therapy for the Heart. In this article, it was describing the work of a Boston physician who instructs his patients in relaxation exercises and in breathing exercises and then has them use a word to focus the mind. This is very much like the steps that we follow in meditation, relaxing, learning to breathe, and then focusing our mind on words or ideas. The doctor reports that of the 11 patients who practice meditation on a regular basis, 20 minutes per day, eight experienced a significant reduction in abnormal beats that had caused a loss of oxygen to the heart muscles. And in two of the patients, the abnormal beats were completely or nearly completely eliminated. Also related in the article was the idea that the doctor had given to his patients who had high blood pressure. He found that by practicing the same type of meditation, these patients achieved a 10 to 15 percent reduction in their blood pressure. Now, at the biofeedback labs at Kansas State University, there has also been recorded significant healings in the area of high blood pressure. In addition to this, their work has revealed significant reductions in migraine headaches, hypertension, insomnia, and the other psychosomatic illnesses. 
All of these have responded to meditation techniques. People who have been suffering from migraine for a long time have learned that by relaxing the body, that they can take away the pressure that is creating or possibly creating the migraine and have eliminated for the most part the migraine or have learned to control them through meditation practices. We can use this in even more significant ways in the way of bodily healing through certain techniques of centering our mind and our attention on areas of the body which may be in need of healing. In addition to bodily healing, another significant area where meditation seems to make almost an instant change is in our image of ourself. As we begin to meditate, we begin to find that we have control of our minds that we did not have before. As we become more relaxed, as we become more centered and quiet, calm of spirit and soul, as well as mind and body, we seem to take on a sense of dignity about ourself, and our self-worth seems to increase. Plus a very important added idea, the idea that for perhaps the first time in our lives, we are in charge. We have a sense of self-direction, a sense of autonomy, where we are in control of ourselves and of our world. This is a very important thing in our modern days because so many of us seem to be influenced by everything that goes on around us. Yet, the person who has learned to meditate can stand even in the middle of Times Square with all of the noises and the hustle bustle going around and find that quietness within even in cases where there may be something going on that needs a calm mind, someone in control, the meditator can instantly find that quiet place within himself and then operate from a sense of awareness that all's right with the world and that the knowledge and awareness needed in the situation is available. Our emotions are another area that give us problems. Many of us have experienced phobias, fears, anxiety, things that give us trouble from time to time. Those who have begun to meditate have found that there is a desensitization of all phobias, fears, and anxiety that when we enter into the meditative process and begin to find this center within us, we begin to find a sense of rightness, a sense of well-being, a sense of power, a sense of authority that we did not have before. And phobias and fears and anxieties often go away of their own accord. Or, during this time, we can work with these phobias and fears and release them from consciousness. If you are a person who feels as though they do not have a need for bodily healing or that your self-image is a pretty good one, that you have no phobias, fears, and anxieties, then there is another phase of the meditative process that may be important to you. For during the meditative process, one has access to unconscious material on a deeper level of consciousness and sometimes from beyond one's own personal consciousness in meditation. For in meditation, you become one with what we might call universal mind or the collective unconscious of man. And in this, you may become aware of things which you need to know. 
for your own unfoldment, for your soul growth, so to speak. Others who have been meditating for a long time find that meditation has aided them in their reading, learning, and memory abilities. They have found that their ability to remember has heightened and increased. Many more have found that out of meditation, those deep levels of consciousness which we may not have wanted to remember sometimes come floating to the surface and in releasing them and letting them go, we are no longer hampered by memories from the past. And certainly a very important aspect of meditation is that the creativity of the individual increases. There is a level of meditation referred to as the theta level. The theta level of meditation is one of the four levels of brain wave activity that is measured by brain wave machinery. The instrument is called an electroencephalogram. Now, persons who have worked with the brain wave machines have found that man has four levels of brain wave activity. The first level is called the beta level, and it applies to those areas where we are concerned with outer things. Usually, our world about us is occupying our attention. The second state is the alpha state of mind. This is the state when we are relaxed, passive, but alert. Usually, our eyes are closed. It is a state in which we have high recall and our memories are very vivid. This is a very productive state of quiet, but it is not the most productive state of all. The third state of mind is the theta state, often referred to as the dream state, but is more like unto a reverie state. During this activity of mind, or the brainwave activities of mind, we are aware that we are in charge of our life. It is a highly creative state of mind. So one would want to take another look at the idea of dreams, because it is from this level called the theta state of mind that we receive our creative flow. Many who go into this theta state find it as a source of vocational guidance. It is also the source of what may be known to those who are students of psychology as archetypal messages, those who have studied dreams and their import. It is in this state that insights come and that we begin to experience things in a different way. As a friend of mine who is a psychologist who works with students in meditation said that he found that working with students on biofeedback equipment and working with this theta, alpha, theta state of mind, that he didn't have to work through all of what he described as the crud that usually has to be gone through in the psychological process. That students very often were able to release and get in touch with those areas that needed cleansing, so to speak, much more rapidly in meditation. The lowest state of brainwave activity is de designated as delta state. This is a state of sleep and non-symbolic dreaming. Some say that this is a state that is achieved in hypnosis. Of the delta state, one is in a state of replenishing the body and the mind and not too much is known of this, but much work is being done in this area. One need not be asleep or relaxed or with their eyes closed to drift in and out of each of these states. We all experience them in varying degrees at varying times, even though we may be outer-directed. 
we will have those alpha theta states of mind particularly artists recognize this for when they are intensely painting something and the flow begins to move they experience something that is known as a creative flow and this is coming from their alpha state and from their theta state now persons who are having anxiety in a very high levels of anxiety are in extreme beta state so we all see one of the benefits immediately of meditation that by quieting the mind relaxing and coming into the alpha state and then into the theta state that we can increase the creativity that we need in our lives to change our world to change our lives biofeedback material our equipment in a biofeedback lab is complicated and there are many labs available around the country if one is interested in this type of activity however using a simple gauge thermometer taped lightly to the second finger of your dominant hand or perhaps a mood ring will indicate to you the state of calmness of mind for the body responds to relaxation by becoming warm when we are relaxed the hands become very warm the blood flows freely and the more we relaxed we are the higher the temperature or in the case of the mood ring the deeper purple the color this all goes back to the good old days when we had to fight and fly away from danger this is known as the fight or flight syndrome in man when he has to get ready to protect himself all the blood goes to the areas where it is needed in the brain and in the body to prepare him for fight or flight then his hands become very cold today we do not have to protect ourselves from animals and such but we certainly do protect ourselves from the onslaught of pressures anxiety and that is created from outer conditions so consequently when we are not able to cope with a situation we can find out that we're not coping by feeling our hands they are very often very cold when we have blocked the flow of feeling from within us then our hands the extremities of our body become cold through relaxation and meditation we can change this so we can see through meditation we are healing the mind and body and healing is really nothing more than a return to that natural state of universal balance which is truly our natural state our state of wholeness we can learn to direct our thoughts in the meditative experience and achieve healing of mind and body the meditative experience that we will now be entering into is called a drill in the silence and is based on a unity pamphlet of the same name this pamphlet has been included in the material that came with your tapes we will start by relaxing the body stilling the mind then i will speak words which you should follow in the quiet of your own mind responding from within the quiet of your own being so let us begin our meditative experience now by finding that comfortable position in your chair with your feet flat on the floor with your spinal column erect but not stiff and your hands in the position which you find most comfortable now that you have found that position let's close our eyes and take a deep breath 
letting out all tension, all concern, all care. Then as you resume normal breathing, tell your body to relax and to be at peace. Relax and be at peace. And feel your whole body responding to your words from the top of your head to the tip of your toes, relaxing and becoming very peaceful. Relaxed and at peace. And then loose the body and let it go from your thoughts, relaxed and at peace. Then to the thoughts of your mind, say, peace be still. Peace be still. And set them aside for the moment. Take another deep breath. Let it out. And as you resume normal breathing, let yourself sink deeper and deeper into the quiet. With each breath going deeper, with each breath becoming more relaxed. And now in this relaxed state of mind and body, listen and follow the words in the quietness of your own being. As you enter into the quiet, feel the power of God flowing through you, freeing you from every thought of tension. Let your whole body, every nerve, every muscle, every cell, relax and let go. In the quietness of your being, affirm with me, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Know it. Know it now. You are relaxed still. You are in the presence of God. Your faith and love unify you with Him. They make your mind His mind. Your body His body. Your life, his life. Your will, his will. Be still and know that I am God. Now, turn your attention to the top of your head and know with me I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Be still and feel the light of spirit through you and over you. Feel yourself immersed as in a sea of light your whole being illumined, awake, exalted, the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Now, center your attention just above your eyes and declare with me, 
I am divine intelligence. I am divine intelligence. Divine mind is a reservoir of ideas, good ideas, yours to draw upon, yours to use. You have opened your mind to the inspiration of God. Now, move your attention to your eyes and centering your attention there, say, I see with the eyes of spirit. I see with the eyes of spirit. Your eyes are the watchful servants of a mind that sees only the perfection of spirit. Your spiritual vision is renewed. You see with the eyes of spirit. I see with the eyes of spirit. Now, center your attention at the throat and affirm with me, all power is given unto me in mind and body. All power is given unto me in mind and body. The power of God is working through you to free you from every negative influence. Nothing can hold you in bondage. You are the overcomer, a son of God. All power is yours to control your thoughts, to vitalize your body, to gain success, to bless others. Unleash your spiritual forces. All power is given unto you in mind and body. All power is given unto me in mind and body. Now fix your thought at the back of your neck and know with me, I am unfettered and unbound. I am unfettered and unbound. You are free with the freedom of spirit. No false condition has any power over you. You are the Christ, a son of the living God, poised in the consciousness of your Christ mastery. You are unfettered and unbound. I am unfettered and unbound. Now, Directing your attention toward your back, declare with me, I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Your yoke is easy. Your burden is light. Free poised, light-hearted. You face life confidently, strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. I am strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Turn your attention now toward your heart and know with me I am the perfect expression of divine love. 
I am the perfect expression of divine love. Divine love. Love transforms. Love transfigures. Love fills the heart with harmony. Love fills the mind with kind, helpful thoughts. Love fills the lips with words of praise and cheer. Love fills life, fills it to overflowing with happiness and peace. Whatever the need or problem, divine love is the answer, and you are the perfect expression of divine love. I am the perfect expression of divine love. Now, fix your attention at the pit of the stomach and say with me, I am satisfied with divine substance. I am satisfied with divine substance. The substance of God erases fatigue from your body, renews tissues, replenishes energy. It stabilizes your mind. It prospers your affairs. Every longing of your soul, every need of your life is fulfilled. You are satisfied with divine substance. I am satisfied with divine substance. Now, focus your attention at the area of the navel and realize with me, divine order is established in my mind and body. Divine order is established in my mind and body. Divine order. The law of the universe is unchanging, absolute. You are now in harmony with that law. It governs and guides you. It is active in your mind harmonizing your thoughts, in your body adjusting its functions, in your affairs establishing peace, success, and joy. Divine order is established in your mind and body. Divine order is established in my mind and body. Now center your thought at the lower part of the abdomen and know with me I am alive forevermore in Christ. I am alive forevermore in Christ. You have entered the secret place of life. Life charges your mind, flows through your veins, permeates your tissues, every nerve, every muscle, every cell. Your eyes shine, your skin glows, your faculties are sharpened, your whole body radiates health. You are one with life, the Christ life, ever renewing life. You are alive forevermore in Christ. Finally, centering your thought in your feet and legs, affirm with me, I walk in paths of righteousness and peace. I walk in paths of righteousness and peace.
the strength and swiftness of God enters your feet and legs so that your way is made easy. The light of his intelligence shines around you so that your way is made plain. His spirit goes before you so that your way is made successful. Now, relax into a time of quiet, letting the activity of spirit do its perfect work in and through your body, in and through your mind, in and through your whole being. Relax in the quiet. You may want to spend a short time in this quietness, letting the mind flow free, letting it flow to its center, letting it experience the revitalizing, renewing action of spirit. When you are through with this quiet time, then begin to bring your attention back up behind the eyes and ever so gently and ever so slowly let light come to the eyes as you gently open your eyelids, not focusing, letting light come until your eyes are opened but not focused. Finally, open your eyes and focus gently on the world around you, bringing with you the sense of vitality and renewal that you have experienced in the silence. And in quiet affirmation of this receiving, we say, Thank you, Father. And it is done.